Hey everyone, it's Rylan. It is 10.43 on June 22nd, 2020, and today I wanted to make a mental health video that specifically has to do with me and my experiences. This is a vulnerable video to make because it's not something that I talk about with people. Um, it's not out of shame or embarrassment, it's just kind of a difficult thing to talk about when you first meet someone. So I figured why not make a YouTube video and just let the whole world know my shit. But here I am. Uh, and always the purpose that I make YouTube videos is because I want people to let them know that they are not alone and the things that I experience with the multiple diagnoses that I have um, are not necessarily rare and other people experience this. So I'm gonna talk about um, short-term memory loss induced by trauma. So my story basically begins about three years ago when I realized that my balance was really off. Um, my girlfriend actually noticed that I would be like running into the arches of my apartment. Like I would literally just be standing there and kind of like tilt into the wall. And then I realized that I was having what I call the drunken stumbles, where I will literally just be standing in place and what ends up happening is I'll just kind of fall over. Like my back leg will like fall behind the other and I, I just look like a drunk person. So these symptoms went on for a very long time and in total I have seen 16 different doctors and that was over the course about of about a year. I had MRIs, I had CAT scans, I saw CAT scans, I saw um, ENTs which are ear, nose and throat doctors. I had um, I think I've had like six different neurologists. I've I've just had every scan done on my body possible. I even had a spinal tap done. There was questions of whether or not I had MS because nobody could figure out why a young person was running into things. And unfortunately, in 2020, I still don't know why that is happening. I have amazing neurologists. I happen to live in New York where we have some of the best healthcare. And luckily I have insurance where I've been able to have all these tests and meet with these doctors, but we still don't have an answer. My balance has gotten better over the past couple years, but the biggest thing that affects me on a daily basis is something that's not talked about, and honestly, I don't know how common it is, um, and that is short-term memory loss. So I had um, a doctor's appointment with a neurological psychologist. So this is a psychologist that specifically works with the brain. People take these tests to find out whether they might have Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's. So I had about a two hour long test of me and another person in the room where I had to do all of these different memory tests, whether it was looking at pictures and um, maybe looking at like 10 different pictures and then trying to recall what those objects were. Um, I had to do a couple of tests with my hand, like moving around. I just wanna make sure that this is on. Um, moving around things with my hand, like completing a puzzle piece. Um, it was a lot of word association stuff um, because it was trying to test my memory recall. And after doing this test, I met with my neuropsychologist to discuss the results. And what ended up being the diagnosis, I suppose, was that I have short-term memory loss as a result of trauma. And when I say trauma, if any of you have watched my videos, you are aware because I'm very transparent that I have multiple mental illnesses. Um, I greatly struggle with PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and I have borderline personality disorder, anxiety, blah, 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 the list goes on. I have a mental health playlist on my channel if you wanna look at my videos where I go over all different mental health things, but suffice to say, I struggle with a lot of mental health conditions. And I've had a lot of trauma in my life. The most recent one is back in 2015, I was sexually assaulted. 
And as a result of that, it induced a lot of symptoms like dissociation. Um, so basically for me, that looked like um, detaching from reality. Sometimes I wouldn't know when I was in an episode, sometimes it felt like the world around me wasn't real. A lot of people who struggle with um, derealization might describe it as watching their life as in they're in a movie, they're very detached or an out of body experience. Um, when I experienced derealization, um, excuse me, depersonalization, those episodes are where I question whether or not I am real, which is really scary um, because I feel like a robot. So when these episodes are happening, what I would say is most distressing is my brain is active that this is going on. So imagine being stuck in your head and questioning whether or not the world around you is real. Now, when it comes to a straight dissociative episode for me that doesn't involve the derealization or the depersonalization, the way that that looks like for me is I end up staring straight ahead at a wall and completely just frozen. If I can talk, there is no intonation. Um, it's just completely a flat affect and I do sound like a robot. And the reason that these things happen to our brains is because our brains are actually doing something truly incredible, which is protecting ourselves. So if there is a perceived threat, for me, if there is a trigger, um, basically your mind is saying, this is too much for me, so I'm gonna kinda take a break and check out because it's trying to protect you from that external threat. It's terrifying when it happens, and I honestly say that dissociation is one of, if not the scariest thing that your brain can do because when you're questioning whether or not you're real, who wants to do that? And one of the biggest things for dissociation with me is selective mutism, which means I literally physically cannot talk. Um, so that's scary. And I've had all of these things going on. I constantly dissociated as a result of the sexual assault traumas, what really brought um, into picture or rather became more known after that event happened. I have had trauma before that and I realized that there might have been stuff in my childhood that might have been trauma. So because of all of these events that have happened in my life, my brain um, decided that it was just gonna not remember things and I would have an extremely short-term memory. And I remember when I was in the office and getting this information, I was like, wait, what the, f what? what are you talking about how is this how is this trauma based like what does this even mean and i remember coming up with this analogy and saying you know let me get this straight essentially what you're saying is i have a garage right and it's stuffed with things just piled up you know think storage wars or something like that and my brain is so piled up with things trauma and what needs to happen is I need to open that garage and have a garage sale and get them get some things out of my brain to clear up space so that I'm able to retain information. I realized that I was having memory issues because, um, and like I said, it's short term. So I can, I can remember my past, um, kind of a little fishy because I don't remember like a lot of major life events I really don't remember my college experience but when it comes to short term stuff an example I could give is I got a new MacBook Pro a week ago and I was looking at the model number on the bottom and I want to say it's like six letters or something like that and I was trying to input the number on my computer because I was looking for a case to take care of my computer and I had to keep turning over my computer because I couldn't remember the next number. I would maybe get that the first letter was A and the next letter was one, but then I couldn't remember that the following ones were maybe like eight, seven, six, five. Three, two, oh, one, Jenny. Um, anyway, old reference if you know that song, congratulations. But that's just a small example is that I literally could not remember one single number that I had just looked at literally five seconds ago. 
Now the way that this affects my daily life and my relationships is I have a girlfriend, we live together, and what happens a lot is I might repeat myself a lot. Um, I may not realize that I've already said something, whether or not it was like a couple weeks ago or literally a couple days ago, I'll start telling a story again and she'll just have to be like, you told me that already. Um, or she will tell me information like, hey, we're just, I don't know, she'll tell me something and then within like a day I will completely forget and it's like new information. And I'm just like, you never told me this when she did. And it's interesting because the clearest example that I can point out of realizing that I had repeating a sentence was I was watching Mr. Robot and that is like my all time favorite show. And there's a character in the show, Tyrell. And I find him very attractive. His hair is it's just beautiful. And I was watching the show with her and let's say maybe we were on like the third episode. And I asked her like, do you think he's attractive? And she was like, yeah, I think he's attractive. Well, I don't know if it was the next episode or maybe the second, but I ended up asking again, do you think he's attractive? Because I didn't remember asking that. So this is all to say that it is very distressing when I literally had to keep flipping over my computer 80,000 times just to remember like six different numbers. It's difficult, you know, obviously meeting people, we all have troubles remembering people's names, but that's difficult. Um, I found that it's very difficult to remember um, or even pick up on TV characters' names. I started watching Community um, and I'm on episode 18 and I still don't know the characters' names because I just, I don't remember them. So unfortunately it does take a pretty big toll on my life and daily functioning. So when I met with the neural, neurological psychiatrist, psychologist, um, my treatment plan and what was suggested was is that I continue with therapy. Um, I've been in therapy two times a week with the same therapist um, for the past five years. And because I have a lot of stuff going on in my life, we, um, you know, kind of have to like constantly jump around with what's going on in my life and maybe addressing a certain symptom or situation during our therapy. Um, but her suggestion was is that I continue what is known as dialectical behavioral therapy and begin to start to, it wasn't, the suggestion was not delve into your trauma and figure out what happened to you. That wasn't it. It was to continue therapy and find ways to be more mindful of what is going on in my life. And the end result of that is taking out some things from the garage, putting them out for the garage sale and getting rid of it. Because through removing all of that extra junk in my mind would allow room for things to go back in and I can remember those six digits. So, you know, I've had to adapt a little bit on how to navigate through my life of not memorizing things. Um, the really crazy thing is that I am an actor and I have the ability to memorize lines. So that kind of is just something that like, I'm just like, how does this make sense that I can remember a four act play that I, play a really large role in and yet I can't remember to I, I buy Febreze at the store so basically I've just when it comes to grocery shopping like I have to make a list otherwise I'm gonna forget things which is common why not make a list when you go to the grocery store um, but it's silly because I don't want to say that I'm necessarily in denial but when it came to the computer situation the other day I should have just written it down instead of getting frustrated and mad at myself and being like, what the fuck, you can't remember this, like you're so stupid. Um, so there are some ways to, you know, find some workarounds to remembering things. I remember one of the suggestions was to um, get like a, a daily planner and write out what I needed to do that day. Um, 
which I haven't had much success with that in the past. I've, I've tried. Oh my God, I've tried, but it just doesn't work for me. So basically, um, that's what's going on is I have a hard time remembering things because unfortunately, very unfortunate things have happened in my past, um, which I just think is so incredible. I think the brain is absolutely incredible that my memory could be affected because of things that have happened in my life. How? What? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, I'm trying my best. It is difficult when I had a job because it's like, I don't want to disclose that I have short-term memory loss to people because I don't want people to think, I don't know, whatever they might think because like I may not remember their name or something like that and I've known them for like an entire month because it's not like I'm being rude and I don't care about you. It's just like I don't remember. And I just wanted to hop back um, like five seconds and talk about um, my memory when it comes to long term. So I remember everyone in my life. It's I don't have um, long term stuff. I remember certain parts of my childhood, but then there are parts of my childhood that I literally, I don't remember. I don't remember actually like what I did yesterday or the day before. So when I have therapy on Wednesdays and Thursdays, my therapist will ask, you know, how was the rest of the week? And I find that it's, it's literally like blocked out. I can't remember. And that is frustrating. That makes me feel bad about myself because not remembering how you, what you did or how you were feeling two days ago, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's just frustrating and distressing. Um, because I've realized that while I do have short-term memory loss, I've also realized recently within like the past month that I think I dissociate a lot more than I was aware of, which could be contributing also to why I don't remember things because essentially I'm not 100% present in the moment and I may not know what's going on. So I just wanted to talk about this because this is something that is personally going on with me and yeah I don't know that people talk about this or that this is even known but here I am uh and yeah I don't really have much more to say besides that but uh thank you for watching my video and um thank you to anyone new that subscribed appreciate it uh, I've gotten an influx of subscribers lately, and I'm not really sure why, but I just wanted to say thank you if you're one of those new humans, and obviously if you've been a supporter for a long time, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, have a good day, y'all, and again, thank you for watching.